Hello everyone, I'm Jeanette Camping from Henry Stewart Events and I'm delighted to welcome you to our latest webinar, How to Work with Your Dam in 17 Applications, sponsored by CI Hub. We'll be having questions at the end of the webinar, so please send in your questions on your GoToWebinar panel. And we are recording today's webinar and you'll all be sent a link to record, of the recording to view again later. So it's my great pleasure to welcome our speakers, Andreas Michalski and Gert Glazer. Thank you both for joining us and over to you, Andreas. Hello, this is great to have you here, all of you. Uh, it's a really international audience today again. It's fantastic to be here after the summer break and uh, lots of things have, have, uh, have been done on our side. And uh, the today's goal is to show you a little bit around, let's say. Around is for CI Hub already 17 different applications. And we would like to show you a little bit today on how easy it would be, um, click, get it, how easy it would be to work with CI Hub across all of the, all of the different applications. A uh, couple of ticks and tri tricks and trick, tricks and tips, tips and tricks. So, uh, <laughs> And uh, and uh, uh, give you give you a good overview. Um, in the last couple of months, we have uh, done quite amazing work. As you see, seventeen different applications are now uh, a part of the CI Hub ecosystem. Um, we have all of the relevant applications now online for uh, Adobe. InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, Premiere Pro, uh, InCopy. Um, we also have the Microsoft family with PowerPoint, Word, Office, and Excel. And today uh, we will show you the brand new version of our PowerPoint implementation. It's, it's really amazing what the team has done over the summer. Um, it delivers very cool functionality. You will be the first to see that actually. Um, we will show you, um, or we will, we, we already have the SharePoint integration. Um, Google is really picking up a lot uh, with Google, uh, Google Sheets, Google Docs, and Google Numbers. I think Google. I always mix that up. And uh, since two weeks, uh, a very amazing Adobe product now. Uh, the Figma stuff, uh, Figma sketch, and not to, and, and also to mention, uh, we will give you a little bit insight into the WordPress uh, integration. So this is all what we have done over the last couple of months, and what we will give you an overview on uh, the in, in, of the host system side. We always call these uh, applications which we are supporting a host system, and click. Uh, we have also done uh, amazing work in connecting more and more wonderful dam systems, PIM systems, but also very important uh, workflow systems. Um, as you may know, we are now already integrating Adobe Workfront, Asana, and we are working on a Monday.com integration. And this is really, really helpful for our users because it's not just now you have the right tool available within the work environment and you have a really easy access to your assets. You also have access to the work ticket. And uh, <clears throat> as we all know, we are integrated into a workflow and this really makes it a very, very powerful tool, not just connecting to your asset, but, but really connecting you to your work. This is what we what we want to show you today, and I don't want to take away uh, too much of the time for the real stuff. So um, I'm really happy to have Gert with me. Hello, Gert. Good to see you in hello, Potsdam. Hello. Good and I would love to take. I would love to um, hand over to Gert. Um, we will be really, really happy to take as many questions as you want at the end of the session. We have reserved enough time for you, so. Please feel free with everything what's going through your mind about the connector and about connecting applications. Just ask and we will um, answer, we will try to answer all of them. Gert, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much and welcome everyone. Um, 
I'm going to sh stop sharing my webcam so that we can have a better view on our slides. Andy, are you going to do the same? So, okay. So, I would like to start presenting the CI Hub connector for the Adobe Creative Cloud, um, available in Design, in Copy, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, and After Effects. Um, the first I would like to show is the uh, um, CI Hub connector, how it works in um, InDesign. Um, so this is how it looks like. It's um, yeah, quite simple interface you can open documents that are stored in more than 60 dam or cloud storage systems and you can start searching for images and start placing images so at the end what you see is um i would say a presentation layer of what the dam provides this is the presentation layer of all the content which is stored in the dam and presented here in any application. In this case, it's Adobe InDesign. We do not only access images, we also access uh, metadata, as you can see. Um, doesn't matter if it's basic metadata or if it's custom metadata, as long as the source system provides these metadata fields, we have access and we can place them in the layout. And I would like to grab some images from my local desktop um, to explain what our check panel is currently doing. And as you can see, I can browse through folders or I can use the full text search, um, no matter how you're going to find your assets. Um, it's always working within the panel. We can use native Illustrator files, everything what you can place within Adobe um, InDesign um, is working also in the connector. So I'm gonna place um, a bit of content in here. It's just drag and drop from the panel into um, the layout. This one here, let's add some people over there. Yeah, and yeah. So if your system is well organized, it's easy to find all components via full text search or via um, uh, folder browsing and just drag and drop them into the layout. So I'd like to add another image from my local desktop. There we go. And when my layout is done, I can just um, write it back into the DAM system. But first, we're going to check the links. So here you can see a list of all assets that have been placed. Um, most of them are coming from Box, and two of them have no logo in front of the file name. That means these are the ones I have currently placed from my local desktop. And as you can see, if I do an inventory, there is um, the ability to relink this file. That means that the CI Hub connector identifies that there is the exact um, same image in the DAM, and you can relink it with the DAM. This one is not in the dam, but I can with one click upload it into the dam and relink it to the document. This is what I've currently did here. So it's quite easy to have full control over all your placed elements. It's easy to place them and it's also totally easy to upload them from your document into your uh, dam system. I'm going to write a new version into the DAM system. This is what I'm currently doing here. So you can create versions or you can upload either new files if you want to. It's up to you. And 
content is not only images, but it could be graphics. So if you're in Illustrator, what I'm currently doing here, I can have the same access. I'm doing some changes in my Adobe Illustrator document and I'll create a new version in the DAM system. That's it. And if we're talking about images, you know, there are some images that have to be, um, yeah, retouched or something like that. So I'm switch over to Photoshop, have the same view, the same details. I can open images in Photoshop, um, do my um, color correction, give it a bit more saturation, and I'm gonna delete this ship in the background so that we can have a um, better view on it. And same procedure, just call the CI Hub panel, select the image and update the file, which means I'm creating a new version. If I have the admin rights, I can always jump back to former versions. Um, that depends on the roles and rights that are currently set up. So what happens in my document, if I do a check again, I will see that there are two warning symbols. And if I hover them, I can see that there are newer files available. I can see the version, so I have a visual control and I can relink them um, one by one, or I can do a bulk relink um, that it relinks all the um, um, latest versions. That's what I'm currently doing here. So my file is completely, all the links are set up correctly, and I'm going to add this file to the dam. And if we're talking about content, it's not only images and text, could also be snippets. This is what I'm doing here. So that means these are layout objects that are designed, but they are still editable. So I can just drag and drop them into my layout and they're perfectly formatted. Um, how to create a snippet and upload it into the DAM that comes um, quite a few minutes later. But we have not only simple snippets, we have other snippets which um, are able to contain variables. And with these snippets, you can use the data merge function, which is available in InDesign in the standard. And with the CI Hub connector CSV export, you can attach, yeah, 50, 100 or 2000 files to this um, snippet, which means you can just click through and place any product you like. Um, perfectly formatted, you don't need to place something manually. And you can also do a um, data merge with multiple records. And that's also doable just with a simple CSV export so you can create um, a bunch of components just by a simple mouse click. So this is what we're doing um, with the snippets. You can also yeah, change the position and it works in, in every position, in, in every layout. And if you change the fonts or whatever, it'll also work. So, how to create a snippet with um, the CI Hub connector is quite simple. Um, just create um, an object, contain some, an image, some text, and I'll grab this Illustrator file and place it. And if I select them and uh, switch over to the system, the CI Hub connector, click Add File and say, OK, create a snippet of my selection. I can uh, name the file and it'll be uploaded and it is created in the source system if it's a dam or a cloud storage. 
and you can reuse these elements wherever you want. Switching back to Premiere Pro, on the right hand side you see the CI Hub connector looks quite the same as it did in every um, application. And by the way, this is a connection to Asana, so I can access my tasks. I can access attachments in the Asana tasks. That's what I did here. Someone did a video with a mobile phone. I can import it directly into Premiere Pro. Um, I can arrange some stuff and um, yeah, put in some transitions or whatever. And as you all might know, Premiere Project works only with linked files. Um, that means everything I'm placing here and everything I'm creating at the end means it has to be packed somewhere and it has to be accessible. So what I'm going to do now is if my Premiere Pro project is done, um, I switch over to my source system. Um, could be a dam or whatever. I'm creating a new folder. Jump into that folder. And now I can upload the whole Premiere Pro project, the project file itself. And I can add all the raw um, the video files that I have placed in this project. So that um, you can see if I uh, do a check via the link panel, everything is connected to um, the files and all the footage which is stored in my dam. So there is no need um, to, to uh, have fear of missing links or something like that. This is completely done. And you can also uh, create versions of your uh, Premiere Pro project. And at the end, I want to have a final um, MP4 file or whatever file. So I have to render it from my Premiere Pro project. That's what I'm currently doing here. And when it's rendered, I can add the file from my local system directly, select it, um, click on OK. And the final rendered MP4 file is also uploaded into my DAM system. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, so at the end, I have yeah um, shown before, we have access to all the tasks. Um, and not only access, we can have um, attachments and drag and drop them. And we can add comments if we want to, um, to a specified task. And, and it's immediately stored and then immediately available for all the participants. And this Switch really makes to... working that that makes really working together really a breeze. Sorry, Kurt. Exactly. So um, now you got me interrupted. I'm sorry, and I'm... I <laughs> <the> wrong... <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry but, for that. No worries, all good. So let's jump back to where we 13. just were. Okay. 13, 13. There it is. Yeah. So. The next uh, application is uh, WordPress and SharePoint. At first, would like to show something in, in WordPress. So adding images to your content management system is the same way. This is the CI Hub connector in WordPress. You can access files. You can access renditions of the files, place them directly in um, um, WordPress. You have the full text search and you have the filter capabilities of the dam system and yeah, you have various renditions available place the assets with renditions and yeah let's do this little carousel um, make it complete yeah. so you can also place different kinds of renditions um, different sizes um, so no need to download them manually and to um, rearrange the resolution or something like that. All done with just one click in, in uh, the CI Hub connector. 
So if we're done and our um, website or our blog page is, is done, I'm going to save the draft. And the really cool thing is, this is the media library, and I can check the content of the whole media library within my um, CI Hub connector. As you can see, these are the images I've currently placed. And yeah, you have also access to um, uh, your work management from WordPress. So you can mark your task as completed and, and write comments or whatever you want to do. The same goes for SharePoint. If you have the SharePoint as a distribution platform for documents um, or for yeah, whatever kind of content, you can also manage it completely with the CI Hub connector. Um, also full control over versions, um, over resolutions. That means you can have all the renditions. You can handle documents. Um, if you want to provide documents via SharePoint, um, you can use the original file. Um, if you want to have a preview, you can have a, a preview image of the Word doc, for example, or of the PowerPoint presentation you would like to provide in your SharePoint environment. So that's, that's all doable with the CI Hub connector. And as you can see, inventory also for SharePoint for all images. You see the source system, the availability, um, if there are newer versions and all this stuff. So as you can see, that there's a document that has been stored, um, a, a Word document. There is a newer version available and you can just handle everything via the CI Hub connector for SharePoint, all the data. Uh, another feature I would like to show you right here, but it's all available in all applications, is the digital rights management. So you can check the digital rights of every asset that has been placed in your content management system, in your brochure or whatever document. Um, you can check that. And as you can see, there are some handshake icons. Um, which shows some details, so it's not available um, in this um, time frame. And I'm going to change the time frame a little bit so that you can see how it works if the time frame is working for the assets. You see, if there's a campaign time frame um, and they have the digital rights for print and online. Everything um, looks green. That means they are available. Sometimes files are available for the US market, but not for Germany. This is how you can do a digital rights check. Let's jump over to a Google Workspace. It's yeah, probably the same interface. Um, you have access to various systems, currently placing some images from Google Drive. Um, so I'm in Google Slide, and you can also use um, the place option to place images. Um, you can place, I think it's working with SVG files and, and everything in between all the files that are possible to, to place. Yeah, it's doable. Even Adobe Illustrator files, because we have the rendition working within the panel. So I can place native Illustrator files as a PNG with all the transparency and whatever is in, um, in the Adobe Illustrator file included. And of course, you have access to full text search in, in Google Workspace. And you have also access to uh, the metadata, which is available. Here, I'm going to place a PSD file with 30 megabytes, choose a rendition, and it's working perfectly. And if you want to add some metadata content to your Google slide, just drag and drop it onto the canvas, and it will create automatically the text frames, the text boxes, and you can rearrange them and put them wherever you want. So this is currently working in um, Google 
um, slides, it's in Google Sheets, and it's in Google Docs available, and it has the same functionalities. It also works with templates in um, the Google Workspace. So if you have templates um, prepared like this one, you just yeah, drag and drop them onto um, the template. And it's the same as if you would type it in into predefined um, frames or, or image frames or text frames. That's all the same. And even the formatting stays um, the same. As you see, if I put in some numbers over there, yeah, it looks perfect at the end. And that goes within minutes, so there is no need to search, download, and transform. And at the end, when you're done, you can upload the file and convert it into a PowerPoint file or an open document or a PDF, whatever you would like. So this is all doable via CI Hub connected directly to your target system. A few words about Sketch. Um, Sketch is also connected with the CI Hub connector to any um, <coughs> of the 60, system, 60 systems. You have all the um, search capabilities, all the filter capabilities. There are some things that are special in those tools. Um, it's the place function, the add as fill, the replace and the replace all features that are available in Sketch for, for the designers. So if I'm going to replace, it replaces with all the attributes, if it's with fill or um, if it's with crop, um, it respects everything, <coughs> sorry, that, um, that was stored within the, uh, the target frame. So the replace feature is working perfectly. And you have also a similarity search um, available within all the um, applications. So you can do a similarity search in Getty or in Adobe Stock, grab the image and replace the original with the one you just found with the similarity search. And of course, um, the link check is also available for Sketch. So you can see that there is something missing or that there are newer versions, all doable. Same goes for Figma. Um, access to all the systems, the same interface, um, all the features, the filters, the search capabilities of the source system is available within the CI Hub connector. So whatever um, the dam provides, it'll be shown up here. Even Unsplash is doable, so you can browse through topics. You can have a full text search for Unsplash images and you can place them directly into a Figma layout. Um, a special thing in Figma is Figma doesn't take images that are larger than 4,000 pixels, 4,096 or something like that. So you don't need to um, um, yeah, render your high-res images again. You can just use them via um, the re um, rendition feature, uh, which is provided by all the systems and place the images um, without any manual stuff in between. So in this case, I'm going to choose a rendition. Um, and you can see this always in this little icon on the upper left corner, which rendition is currently selected. And this is the different difference between Figma and Sketch. If you select the frame, you can add stuff as fill. Um, you can place them automatically and they will be placed with a fill um, parameter. If I select a frame, it also um, um, places the images with the fill function so that there is no white space in between. 
And of course, the replace feature is working perfectly if you're doing uh, designs for mobile or for website and you need to replace images. Um, that's no longer manual stuff. It's just one mouse click. And the same goes for the replace all feature. Even if you were dealing with icons or all this stuff and you didn't have made that with components, um, you can reuse the replace all feature. You have also the check panel available. So all the assets that have been placed in Figma are linked to the DAM system. So if there is a newer version available, um, that's what I'm doing here. I can just replace the latest, um, the older version with the latest version. Um, that's really perfect. And if it comes to metadata, if you need text, um, most of the time there is some, some um, text needed for a demo um, or for the designs in Figma doable all within one frame. So you can just select a formatted part and then drag and drop the text into it and it's perfectly formatted. The same goes for all components. If you're working with components in Figma, if you replace one, the main component, it'll automatically replace the, the rest. And it's perfectly working with color styles. So if you add images from the CI Hub connector to color styles, it will be recognized and in the whole document, everything will change based on what I did for the color styles and the images. Even in the check panel, you can see that this image was used in the dark gray color style, this one in the light gray color style. So you have a full control of what has been placed and where it has been used. <coughs> Microsoft 365 applications. First, um, short view to Outlook. Um, so if you search for images in the dam and you want to send it per mail, this is how it goes. Um, the panel works perfect in Outlook and you can even place Photoshop files as a low res file. Not only attach it, you can place it within the email and the same goes for metadata. So if you want to add some text, this is how it works. Let's switch over to the new connector for PowerPoint we've just created with amazing features. Um, so the look and feel and, is still the and, same. And, and, and maybe we tell what is new on that one because mostly maybe not everybody knows the, the old yeah, version. Just you. I will stop it and you speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, to, just to give you a context here, we had because really a lot of people asking if we couldn't have the same functionality uh, of of capabilities like the check panel and uh, and uh, the ability to check for newer versions and to switch assets from one asset to the other one and layouts. Um, this is a huge thing, especially in uh, in the Adobe uh, in 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 PowerPoint and. This is what the team has created. We will release that uh, in mid of October. And uh, this is actually what we show you here. We have a version, which is in, which is we will call that an easy entry version that works across all of the platforms. So this is a plugin that works also in, uh, in PowerPoint for Mac and for Windows. And we have a specific Windows version now, which has a much huger functionality scope and uh, this is the version Gert now shows here. Okay. So just get on. So as you can see, you can now um, import layouts from an existing uh, file. This is what I've currently done here. You can also import slides. So that means you can add single or multiple slides directly from the CI Hub connector to your PowerPoint document. Um, 
And this is really perfect if you want to create a new PowerPoint and you have some elements, um, that's, that's perfect. Just add single slides or multiple slides to your presentation. That works really perfect. And at the end, placing images um, is the same. Um, yeah, you can use renditions or the original, just place them into the layout. Still the same for uh, metadata, which can be used. And as you can see, everything fits into the template that has been pre-built. And you can, of course, write those files back to the system. Um, and the new feature is, for example, I can now replace a single image. Um, and I have a feature that says, let's do those two. And of course, we have a feature that says replace all images in the presentation. So this is not only one slide, it, it'll replace the images in the whole presentation. So it looks for the images that have been selected and replaces them um, with these files. And a really cool feature is the uh, slide master merge. So you can merge master slides. So the one I've just had was without the um, CI Hub logo in the upper right corner. And I've merged um, the whole master slides with the one with um, the logo in the upper right corner. So this is really cool if you want to change your master slides, um, um, add single slides or add layouts, whatever you want to do. And the main thing is what you can see here, you have access to all the placed images. Um, you have access to the versions. So in this case, I'm going to replace the latest version with an older version just to demonstrate that. So if I go back to this slide, you can see that this airplane is now in. This is the older version. Um, and I get the warning symbol on the right-hand side, which says that there's a newer version available. And I can relink it again with the latest version. And that's it. So full control over all the assets that have been placed in your PowerPoint um, document. This is really great stuff because you, every asset is connected to your dam. Um, this is really cool. And of course, if you're done with your presentation, you can upload it, uh, upload the file via the IHOP connector into your DAM system. And it's immediately available for all your colleagues if they want to grab one or two um, uh, slides out of this deck. It's, it's working perfect. And of course, we have a similarity search included. That means you select the image and you do a similarity search in Adobe Stock or in Getty Images. And if you find the right one, you can just replace the existing file with the one you found in your stock provider environment. And of course, you can upload assets from the PowerPoint application directly to your DAM. It's the same. Um, um, work environment, which we have currently in Adobe InDesign. And of course, you can create versions of PowerPoint files. Yeah, this is, again, all the features we have. This is slides import, slides layouts import, the master merge, the master replace. You have full control over all the notes. Um, you can choose between merge and replace. The handouts can be replaced or merged. And of course, you have the open in PowerPoint feature. So I think this is really a huge step forward if you're doing lots of stuff with, with PowerPoint. Yeah, and it's connected to more than 60 systems. We got a lot of feedback from from large corporates that want to have that master and 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 slide master 
compliance and this is now this is now capable we are now capable of doing that this is really uh, a huge step forward because now you can with that simple plugin installation takes about a minute yeah um, it's fully compliant with all the security requirements we get from large corporates that are quite sensitive uh, you have now a full powerpoint management tool for all of your slides and it's really easy it's a click of a button and you make sure that your whole presentation is compliant um, and this is and and the way we do that is so simple yeah that there is almost no training needed and that's just included in the full package what we have and it's it's really a huge step forward so we're really really happy that the developers have delivered that um, will be available on our website um, mid of October cool cool so the last application we have Andy maybe you would like to say something about um, this special thing <laughs> it's not really an application we have a new oh. integration to it and uh, I think everybody is everybody's talking about who what will what will the uh, what will the area of AI generated images bring and what are the capabilities what can we do with all of that so we made the decision to implement in the first version stable diffusion so uh, mid of with the mid of October release you will have the access to the stable diffusion integration and that gives you access to the full power of AI generated images um, within all of the application get showed you and it's it's really simple we you just log into your um to your stable fusion account uh everybody who is a little bit familiar with stable fusion knows you just log in there you get an account and then you just um, have the ability to uh, to connect to the stable fusion and what you do there is you just select um the, the size of the image you want to get back. We give you a couple of options with the AI generation. You just tell the system on how many different versions of an image you want. Uh, in that case, we had two and you select the model, which, which, is, which is basically what kind of rendering does the system. And then you just type in what kind of image you want. And you see, this is a detailed photo of a house at a sandy beach. You click on a button and there is an image you just drag and drop it into your indesign uh, or maybe you want to have it a little bit different so you just type during sunset, sunset. Yep. and then it generates an image uh, of, a, of a house at a beach at a sunset that image did not exist two seconds before we <laughs> pushed that button um, and this is yep. This is really cool. You can use it in all of your assets and then just upload it back into your dam system or whatever storage system you have. Um, and this is this is really we're we're always amazed on on how easy it is to use AI to create images that were never there. And you can really you can type whatever you want. You can say um, generate me a rabbit with a hat in a sunset like Warhol. And then you would get exactly that back uh, and you can use that. It's, it's an example on what you can do. Um, it will be publicly available to all of our CI Hub users and for everybody who is starting a trial version. Uh, we will enhance the capabilities of parameters you can give into the model um, and you can use it wherever you want. Just play around with it. Just use it in Figma or Sketch or or in all of the applications we do support, it will be available. Um, and if you like that, let us know what you like to have enhanced. And uh, next thing would be, uh, as soon as it's commercially available, uh, would be a DALI integration, which is also very nice because they have a little bit different um, um, model type. They render images, very powerful also. Yeah, this is, uh, this is AI generated images. Uh, believe I believe it's really powerful what is coming there yeah just take a look at that so I okay. think that's it
I'm I'm through with these 17 applications. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we, we do know it's always looking a little bit boring, the presentation of all the applications, because what we work on and what is very important for us is that the interface is the same, that the capabilities of the applications are the same, regardless of what kind of product you're using. This is, for us, a really, really important thing, because it's easy to install it, it's easy to learn it, and if you know how it works in PowerPoint, you know how it works in InDesign or in Photoshop. This is something what we believe is important for organizations um, that you save on administration and on training, and you have a very intuitive, simple tool that works across all of the products you need for your daily and for your creative life. Um, yeah and um and it, yeah and it sorry, helps yeah. and and it helps um the the powerpoint users access um data mm -hmm. like adobe in, uh, illustrator files which mm -hmm. they never heard before but they can use it now um mm -hmm. for icons or all what is mostly needed if you're doing powerpoint presentation so i think the yeah. access to all kinds of assets that's the main thing what we provide with with um, the IHUB connector. Yeah. So we have spared a little bit time for questions. Um, if there are questions, it would be amazing if you have some. Uh, there was a question on what kind of dam system is GERD using. Uh, we normally do not use dam systems in our presentations. Uh, we are using today a box.com. Uh, I think everything what Gert showed was on a on a box.com. Most of so, it was a box. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is what we do there. Uh, I had a question on where can I get the CI app connector? That's very easy. Um, if you go to the Adobe Exchange store or to the Microsoft store or to the Figma store, uh, just search for CI Hub. Um, the CI app connector is there with the push of a button. You can install it and then you can um you can just start using it on that one. Um, we have a question on, do you have a plan for integrating with Canto Dam? Uh, no, we don't. In the moment, we are supporting about 60 different uh, systems uh, globally, and we're adding a new integration every couple of weeks. So um, you can expect that the 100 relevant systems in the world will be connected to CI Hub uh quite soon and uh, don't forget it's not just dam systems it's also pim systems and its workflow systems we believe that the variety of systems you need need to be in a platform to make your life really really easy um uh, do you have a plan to uh, to integrate with the adobe experience manager yes we do um the team is actually working on uh on the specifications and building the integration for Adobe AEM. Um, we are part of the Adobe Max in October, and uh, we'll see if we have news around that time frame for you. Um, what type of reporting is available from CI Hub? Um, actually, um, there is no reporting from CI Hub, but Everything what your DEM or PIM system supports on receiving on information, the CI Hub connector can deliver back to the DEM system. So if you have in your DEM system something like a cross-referencing information, then we can deliver back to the system the exact information, what asset is on what page, in which frame, used by whom, uh, and uh, in what resolution. We deliver all of these informations back to the supporting uh, storages, and they would then create reports that are not giving you the information that asset has been downloaded. They can now give you the information that asset is really used in an application on a page in a frame on a certain date, so that we enhance the capabilities of the connected DAM systems massively. Can you work in the Sitecore integration at the same way you do with WordPress? Yes, absolutely. How are 
relink relations managed and are they exportable in a report form? So um, the 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 uh, links are managed by uh, we 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 save the 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 asset information, but we are not relying on on a pass. We are relying normally on asset IDs and uh, exporting data from the link panel is something what we have on our roadmap. <clears throat> okay. If there is any more questions, oh, there is a thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, it was a pleasure having you all here. Um, I hope it was interesting. Uh, we do hope that um, the capabilities um, across all of the different applications is something where you see a value in and what is helpful for your organization maybe. Um, just go to one of the stores, just download an application. Installation takes about a minute um, and you can just start with a free trial version. The trial version runs for four weeks. It's a full version, there's no limitation in it. Just try it and play it around. Uh, and just connect with us whenever you have a question. Uh, the next situation to see, to meet us in person, maybe someone is at the Adobe Max, would be amazing to see you there. Or there will be an event in France, in Paris. Uh, maybe we see us there, it's the, Dam, it's the On Dam Paris in November. Um, or in October, the Adobe Max would be a huge pleasure to see you. Gert, thanks a lot for showing us around. That was really amazing. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thanks for Henry Stewart for organizing all of that. It was really, really cool. Thank you, Jeanette. Thanks, Andreas. Thanks, Gert. We look forward to the next set of webinars that you'll be doing with us next year. Very excited about that. Yep. So stay tuned, everybody. There's lots more coming from CI Hub. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Bye-bye.